coming to you from Hope Family Fellowship, a place of hope in Northeast Texas. It's time for Hope Kids, starring Pastor Rusty, Miss Sasha, Miss Chastity, Miss Chesley, and Major Lee Skeptical. Also starring Josh, Teriyaki, and Disco Dave. Buckle in your seats, kids, because it's time for our next lesson in our series. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Hey, welcome to Hope Kids. We're so excited you have joined us. This is our second week for I Know It Sounds Crazy, but it's true. Here's what I want you to do. Have your mom and dad write in the comment section uh, who's watching. So we're going to give away a special prize at the end. Or they can simply text the word KIDS to 903-300-1994. We're going to be giving away a special prize and we're going to announce it in two days. So we want you to sign up for that. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Have we got a crazy Bible story for you today? How many of you have a brother and sister? How many of your brothers and sisters have ever made you just a little bit mad? How many have had a little bit of a hard time trying to forgive their brother and sister? Of course it's difficult to forgive someone, even our family. But we've got an incredible Bible story today that's going to talk all about a family fight and how we can forgive somebody. But first, we've got to check in with our friend Josh. So check out today's video. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of I Know It Sounds Crazy, But It's True. I'm Josh, and my friends and I... Yeah! Howdy do! I'm so excited! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. You people make my brain hurt. I couldn't look at it. You stay away from my brain, creepo. Guys, focus. Excuse me. We're here to talk about some of the weirdest, <laughs> wackiest, <laughs> and strangest stories of the entire Bible. And today, we're talking about two brothers. Hey. Jacob and Esau. Now, Jacob and Esau had a dad who was blind. He couldn't see at all. And Jacob and Esau knew that when their dad passed away, Esau was going to get a special blessing. <laughs> Jacob was jealous of his brother. I mean, big time. And so Jacob was going to trick their dad to give him the blessing instead of his brother. And how exactly is he going to do that? Esau was a really hairy guy. Kind of like Bigfoot. What are you looking at? Or Chewbacca. <laughs> Disturbing. So Jacob got help from his mom. Hello. And covered himself with animal fur. <laughs> to trick their dad into thinking he was his hairy brother. Here we have Jacob sporting the latest animal fur fashion, looking just like his brother Esau, and not at all like some weird hairy lady. Talk about nuts! How silly! That'll never work! <laughs> well, it did work. Never mind. Esau found out, and he was furious! <laughs> and Jacob had to run for his life. Be right back. Gotta run for my life! But where's Jacob gonna go? I don't know. What's he gonna do? I just said I don't know. And can I look at his brain? No. You're gonna find out what happens next in today's lesson. Professor? Hello. Hit the button. Okie dokie. Goodness. Those brothers had a really crazy situation going on. Can you imagine putting on animal fur to pretend that you're really your hairy brother? Crazy, right? What's going to happen today? This is a crazy situation these brothers are in. Will they forgive one another? Will they come back together? Well, we're going to find that out in today's story. But first, we got to hear from my friend, 
Disco Dave, and he's going to teach us what you got to know. What's happening, you crazy cats? It's me, Disco Dave, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning the importance of resolving conflict with others. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them, no matter how you've done me wrong, I know we can't get along. Sometimes, folks just don't get along, even in church. I'm mad at you. You don't think my hair is funky fresh. You're right. I think it's out of sight. Like, get that thing out of sight. Why I order? That's not how we handle things at all. We gotta handle things with love. We gotta handle them the Bible way. So today, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. No matter how you've done me wrong, I know we can get along. That right there is what you gotta know. I'm Disco Dave saying, Dino Mike! Thanks, Disco Dave. Every time you hear this, out of sight, what you gotta know. I want you to stand to your feet and say, no matter how you've done me wrong, I know we can get along. Every time you see that sound today, do what you gotta know. I didn't know I needed permission to speak. I'm very sorry. Relax, civilian. I was just pulling your leg. Not literally pulling your leg, because if I was, it would be like, ow, 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 that hurts. Um, so what is your name? Major Skeptical, Major Lee Skeptical. It's an honor to meet me. You know, I, a lot of people say that I'm too young to be a major, but I climbed up the old ladder with all these skills. It's nice to meet you, Major, and I believe you are a Major. You know, that makes me think of our lesson today and how we're never too young to do think big things for God. You're saying a kid can do something that, that for big for God? I doubt that. Where'd you get an idea like that, civilian? It's straight out of the Bible. You are welcome to listen to our lesson today. Hopefully it'll help you understand that we all can be examples. I have my doubts. I mean, I've seen some crazy, heard some crazy stories about the Bible. Uh, it's hard to believe some of some of that things I've heard about the Bible. But you know what? In my training, I always want to get to the truth. So I think I'll stick around in the general area. Oh, good. Today's lesson is super cool. Super cool. Super cool. It's gate duty at 2 a.m. at 17 degrees with snot sickles hanging from your nose. That sounds super cold and kind of gross. Kind of gross, kind of gross. It really is kind of gross, but with, it's nothing whenever they fall out a good premium handkerchief can't take care of. Well, that's good. Oh yeah, we were issued some premium handkerchiefs there in the army. I believe you, no doubt here. I was a little reserved by the fact, but phew, one swap and it's gone. Well, as interesting as this conversation is going with snot sickles and uh, handkerchiefs, I think it's about time we get back to our lesson. That's enough, civilian. Time to get back to business. Will do. Well, I bid you farewell and good day. Left, okay, bye, majorly left, skeptical. Right, left, left. <laughs> gotta know. No matter how you've done me wrong, I know we can get along. Hey friends, Miss Chastity here. Today we are going to talk about two brothers who are twins from the Bible. Um, one's name is Esau 
and one's name is Jacob. Esau was born first, and according to the tradition back then, he was supposed to receive his father's blessing and get all of his father's possessions when he died. His brother Jacob did a very wicked thing, though. He tricked his father into blessing him instead of Esau. That meant that Jacob stole all of Esau's possessions um, from underneath him. Um, Esau got more than just a little upset. He threatened to kill Jacob. Um, So Jacob, being scared, took all of his things and he fled and ran for his life. Years and years went by and the brothers never talked to each other or even saw each other. After many years of running from his brother, he heard that um, he was close by and he wanted to apologize. So Jacob sent messengers to Esau's um, home and told them that he wanted to make up. So he offered him gifts, animals, and other things that, in order to let Esau know that he was serious. When Esau saw all of those gifts, he was surprised. Jacob was excited when his servants arrived back at his camp, but the servants came with some startling news. The servants told Jacob, Esau is on his way with 400 men, an army of 400 men. When Jacob heard this, he was terrified. He thought Esau wanted to kill him. So there was only one thing he could do, and that was to pray. So Jacob got down on his hands and knees and prayed to God to save him from his brother Saul from killing him. Jacob knew he needed God's help to end the family fight. The next day, Esau arrived with his men, and Jacob ran out to greet Esau. When he went out to greet him, he humbled himself by bowing down at his feet. Um, But Esau grabbed him up and gave him a big hug and forgave his brother for all of the things that he did. Out of sight! What you gotta know? No matter how you've done me wrong, I know we can get along. Do a little sweet and some salt. A little sweet. Oh, hey boys and girls, it's me. Terry, Terry Yaki, and I was just cooking up something tasty for my restaurant, Nice Rice. It's a five-star fine dining establishment that's famous for, you guessed it, my rice. Hard to mess that up. Now today, I'm also cooking up a very special power verse. The trouble is, I'm famous for getting things mixed up. Eggs aren't the only thing I scramble. I mix up the ingredients, the names of our dishes, and even the power verse. So I'm gonna need your help unscrambling the whole thing today. So let's look at it together. Do all that everyone can to live in peace with Romans. U1218. Um, yes, this is not right. Very wrong, very mixed up. Kinda reminds me of the time I tried to make pizza but forgot the crust. Ooh, what a mess. Boys and girls, I'm going to need your help getting this one unscrambled. Let's look at it together. Hmm. Do all that everyone can. That sounds odd. Let's move everyone to the side. (whistles) To live in peace with Romans. Wait a second. We shouldn't just live in peace with Romans. We should live in peace with everyone. Oh yes, everyone. Where does it say this verse is found? U1218? Hey, thanks Teriyaki for giving us today's power verse. Kids, we want you to stand up and sing with us this worship song. Which means the word you can only go in one place. Yes. That's it, I think we have it. Now, stand with me and say it loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18. That's a great power verse. Now, let's make sure we really know it so when we need to remember it later, it's not all mixed up in our brains. Stand up and say it loud on the count of three. One, two, three. 
Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Romans 12, 18. Great job, boys and girls. Now, I've got to get back to making this lasagna. Or was it lasafia? <laughs> get it? Lasagna, lasafia, lasagna. Okay, the customers are waiting. So until next time, this is Teriyaki saying ladles up. Hey, thanks Teriyaki for giving us today's power verse. Now kids, we want you to stand up and sing with us this worship song. All right, now it is time for us to worship the Lord. So everyone stand up on your feet. Everybody stand up, stand up, stand up. And let's put our hands together and get ready to praise the Lord. All right, clap your hands. No matter how you've done me wrong, I know we can get along. All right, boys and girls, in today's lesson about I Know It's Crazy, this lesson two focuses on what to do when we're dealing with conflict in our family. 
Today, we're going to talk about what happens when families fight. When we've hurt someone else in our family, it is really important to apologize. But it's equally as important for us to be willing to receive that apology and forgive our brother or our sister. It is so important not only to apologize, not only to say that I'm sorry, but also to receive it and to give forgiveness. Sometimes we get hurt in our families, but being hurt is just part of life and everyone deals with hurt. Things happen at school, at church, things even happen at home. Have you ever seen a scene that looks something like this? Hey, I had that first. No, you didn't. I did. Yes, I did. Give it. No. Give it. No, I'm telling mom. Find mom. Fine, then keep it. I hate you. I hate you more. <laughs> so does that look familiar to you? Have you ever had a scene like that in your house? Well, fights are almost unavoidable in your family and even among friends. Things like that happen. We get in fights and arguments sometimes. But what do we do when that happens? There's no way around it. Do we apologize? Do we continue to fight and argue and refuse to move on? Well, we're going to look at the two brothers from the Bible story, Jacob and Esau. We're going to learn from the Bible about what Jacob did to make up with Esau and be able to move on in their relationship. Do you remember what happened when Jacob learned that Esau was close by? He sent some of his servants to go visit Esau, and he brought gifts with him. He didn't wait for Esau to come to him. He was the one who did something wrong, so he made the first move. What is the lesson when we're in a conflict? The first lesson is make the first move. If you're in a conflict with someone, it's your job to make the first move, especially if you did something wrong. It's your job to go to your sister or your brother when you've made them mad or even when they've made you mad. You can make the first move and you can help your relationship move on. If you've done something to your friend to upset them, maybe you made fun of them. Maybe you didn't take them seriously or you weren't a good listener. It's your job to go to your friend and tell her or him that you're sorry. And it's also your job to forgive and help move on. When you make the first move, just as Jacob did, then you're acting the way God wants you to act. The next step is to ask God for help. You see, it's not always easy to make the first move, and sometimes we need to ask God for help. That's what Jacob did. If you understand the story from the Bible, you'll see that when Jacob heard that his brother was definitely coming to meet him, he got down on his knees and he prayed to God. Remember what he said? He was honest with God. He said, God, I am so scared. In fact, I'm scared to death that Esau is going to kill me and my family. God, please help me. When Jacob did that, God heard him, and God was willing and able to help him through this time of asking for forgiveness and helping to resolve the conflict. When we've hurt someone, making the first move and talking to the person after a long time is actually pretty scary, and sometimes it can be very hard. At times, we don't even know what to say, but that's why God is there to help us. God will give us the words to say, and he'll help the person that we're apologizing to receive that apology. We need to ask God for help. God will always help us to have courage, to have strength, and the forgiveness that we need to make things right. The next step in asking for forgiveness and receiving forgiveness is keeping a humble attitude. Esau arrived at Jacob's camp. Jacob ran out to meet Esau. He didn't even wait for him to come directly to him, but he ran out to greet him. And Jacob kept a humble attitude. He greeted his brother Esau by bowing down before him. He acted like a servant, even though he wasn't. He took the attitude of a servant. And Jacob didn't start telling Esau off. He didn't have a chip on his shoulder. He didn't list all the things that Esau had done wrong or by getting on to him for not forgiving him. 
But instead, J Jacob bowed before Esau in humility. That's what we need to do. We need to go to the person with a humble attitude, not a chip on our shoulder, but out of love and servanthood, and simply say, I am sorry. Esau, in return, he ran towards Jacob, and he embraced him in a huge hug. He forgave his brother, and they both celebrated that the family was back together. They had resolved their conflict. They weren't fighting anymore, and they had forgiven each other. When two people who have been apart come back together, we call that restoration. They restored their relationship. If you follow steps one, two, and three, you can move on to step four, just like Jacob and Esau. Celebrate restoration. As Christians, we are not meant to be angry with each other. God wants us to live in love and peace and harmony in our families. That's why we have to follow the example of Jacob and make the first move, ask God to help us, and keep a humble attitude so that we can celebrate restoration. When the fighting is over and the family and friendship is restored, isn't that an awesome thing? Kids, I want you to bow your heads with me, and we're going to pray and ask God as he helps you restore relationships in your family and resolve conflict. Lord, I thank you that you are a God who loves harmony and peace among our families and our friends. I pray that you would help these kids who may be fighting among the members of their family and help them, Lord, that those who have hurt hearts or may have hurt someone in their families will be able to make the first step and have a humble attitude and celebrate restoration. God, I pray that you would allow peace and harmony to reign in families. Help these students, these boys and girls, to make the first move, to have humble attitudes and hearts, and in turn show Christ-like love. In Jesus' name, amen. Out of sight! What you gotta know? No matter how you've done me wrong, I know we can get along. We are so glad that you joined us for Hope Kids tonight. It was awesome to have you watching along with us. If your family needs prayer, have your parents email us at prayer at hopefamily.tv or they can text the word PRAY to 903-300-1994. Don't forget to enter our contest before you log off tonight. All you got to do is have your parents comment that you're watching in the comment section or have your parents text the word KIDS to 903-300-1994. We're so glad that you watched along with us tonight, and we can't wait to see you here next week. Make sure to join us next Sunday night, and we'll see you then.